For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm going to give you guys a bit of a tutorial video talking all about the Vango Airspeed Valve and essentially a little bit of a history behind it and why it's a little bit different to what other manufacturers use on their products. So first and foremost, Vango uh, were kind of the creators of Airbeam back in 2011 and back in then with all of their tents, all of their awnings and driveway awnings, uh, they pretty much used a classic kind of Boston valve, a screw threaded plastic valve that was very easy to use. Um, and some that still people in like likes of Camper or uh, Zempire still use on their valve system today. Nothing wrong with it, but Vanga wanted a sort of a way of finding it easier and sort of a bit more hassle free and should we say idiot proof um, to put tents up and down uh, and also in essence use a valve to your advantage by allowing it to deflate as well as inflate. So they created their own uh, airspeed valve, so it's a sort of pattern painted um, version and they designed it themselves to their own specifications. Now, what you find is located around about a midpoint where it be on a tent or an awning, uh, and you've got kind of an open kind of flap, which sort of covers it nice and neatly. Behind the flap, if you open it up, you then can see the valve itself, and there's a cap on the valve. By twisting and removing the cap, like a barrel lock, uh, it then exposes the valve itself. Now the valve itself, as you can see, you've got a kind of a white middle prong, uh, an inscription on the bottom saying close and on the side saying open. The kind of oblong kind of prong points to the open or closed position depending on what it is. Now it's actually on a sprung loaded system, so if you were to push that valve directly in, it would allow air to come out. Alternatively, if you actually push and twist that so it remains on sort of oblong on open, it keeps the valve open, allows air to flow out quite happily, so you haven't got to worry about holding your finger down um, to get all the air out. So key thing is, again, make sure that oblong is horizontally, um, so it's nice and neatly and keeps that valve open, so it deflates it quite happily, as I'm about to show you now. So now I've done that, it's completely open, and again, all the pressure there will more than happily come out of that as well. So when you're packing away your tent or awning, by having that valve completely open, as you're folding it from the far side across, um, that air is still allowing to flow quite happily out the valve system and not being trapped and end up when you come to roll it across, having a massive sort of air bubble. One thing as well to bear in mind is that on the actual pump you supplied, um, you have got a ability of a deflate function. To use a deflate function on the dual action hand pump, you first have to remove the pressure gauge, mainly because the pressure gauge is in itself a one-way valve. So by removing that, put that in my pocket, you can actually then use your pump on deflate if you wish. In all honesty, I've never done it. Uh, I've never had to use this to deflate a tent, but if you want to, you can use that as you need to. So by pushing that in again, twist that, and then the pump actually locks onto it. You can then... And you can see the sort of the, hear the noise is a little bit different to the way it inflates. So what I'm gonna do is take that off, put my uh, pressure gauge back on so I know what PSI I'm pumping up to. Put it on the date function. And then same idea again, pushes on. And it one, sometimes you can find out if, you, if you're pressing against it and the, and the actual nozzle's not going in, what it's basically doing is the back of the valve is sitting very tightly against the fabric and it can't open up to go through. So in this case, you might have to lift the valve up to give it a little bit of space behind, especially if you're not on the floor, sometimes a bit of a hindrance. Then that should more than happily push in, twist, and then it's physically locked on there um, and it's not gonna kind of go anywhere. If for any reason, as you start to pump, you find that you can't actually lift the pump up, what it'll be is you'll have to put it on uh, back onto deflate rather than inflate. It's a common mistake, don't need to worry about it. Make sure it's all right way around and then you can inflate the tent. You can certainly see there how the noise is a bit different as it's sucking air in, go in the tent itself.
So I monitor the pressure by looking at the pressure gauge on top and I want to be 7 psi right there. And then once I'm at 7 psi, I can happily disconnect the pump from there. It would automatically shut off. So when you inflate, it doesn't really matter whether it's on open or close. As it actually takes the nozzle off, it will automatically put it to close. Once the cap's back on, you can then shut up the valve, keep it nice and easy, and move on to the next model. Again, the pump, quite nice and easy. You can, there is an electric pump you can buy to physically just plug it in, digitally set the pressure. Once it gets 7 PSI, it will cut out. With these kind of products, you can use them kind of, the green zone, as you can see, from our earlier image, sort of stretches from six to eight PSI. Really on this sort of tensive kind of windy weather, there's no reason you can't go to eight PSI, if not a little bit higher, depending on what happens in terms of the internal temperature. So really, you know, nine PSI, this will give it an extra bit more rigidity. The beams have been tested beyond 15 PSI. Um, the pump generally only does about 10. So you never got to worry about sort of overinflating it too much. It's um, been very much tried and tested, and even before Van Gogh launched this sort of air beam system back in 2011, they had done basically 10 years of research beforehand and a lot of sort of con consumer product testing to make sure when it hit the market, it was, you know, bang on. And to be actually perfectly honest, you went in the first year in 2011, there were a few still even issues. Back in 2020, uh, sorry, 2012, they really nailed it on. And then from ever then, we're now best part of 10 years nearly. Um, of inflatable tents um, from Van Gogh, it seems that they've really grasped the concept and other manufacturers are really following suit. But of course, always check out our rest of our tutorial videos if you want more information about packing it away, putting it up, adding side parts on it. You can always check it on our uh, website or our YouTube channel in the link below. But that's kind of a bit more of an insight into how to use the airspeed valve, how to sort of, again, help yourself in not closing the valve um, when you want to pack it away to allow air to flow out quite nicely. And like I said, when you even use, say, the deflate function, one thing I'll do is make sure when you take the valve, the little nozzle off, should we say, it will revert it back to close. So, so even if it, you think you've got all the air out, still rotate that uh, little prong round to the open, just that way any excess air for some reason you didn't pump out, then means it's closed up quite nicely. But that's kind of our little uh, insight view into the airspeed technology from Van Gogh.